This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. Welcome to Donating Retirement Assets, Part 1, Giving During Life. This is Professor Russell James. Donating retirement assets can result in terrible tax consequences or fantastic tax consequences depending upon the timing and the circumstances of the donor. Thus, it's especially important for advisors and fundraisers to have some familiarity with the tax rules associated with such gifts. Given the inherent complexity in dealing with retirement assets, some might consider simply ignoring these assets as a source of charitable gifts. Rules for traditional IRAs, 401k accounts, 403b accounts, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs, and so forth may seem intimidating. However, retirement assets should not be ignored. This is true in part because the client can experience significant positive tax consequences from such gifts in certain circumstances. Aside from these potential tax advantages, retirement assets cannot be ignored because they represent such a large share of all household wealth. More than a third of all household financial assets are held in the form of retirement assets. Thus, neither fundraisers nor advisors should ignore this substantial source of wealth holding. Retirement assets can be donated during life or at death. The tax consequences are very different for each type of gift, so they'll be covered separately. Gifts during life involve more complicated considerations, and their advisability depends in part upon the life stage of the retirement account. Retirement accounts such as traditional IRAs, 401k accounts, and 403b accounts have three stages. Each stage corresponds to a different tax consequence of gifting assets from the account. Before the account holder reaches age 59 and a half, distributions will be considered early distributions and are typically subject to penalties for withdrawal. When the account holder reaches age 59 and a half, these penalties no longer apply. However, as with other distributions from the account, the account holder must pay taxes on these distributions because the income was not taxed when initially put into the account. Finally, when the account holder reaches age 72, he or she is required to take at least minimum distributions from the accounts each year. These distributions count as taxable income to the donor. For donors younger than 59 and a half, making gifts from a retirement plan is generally a bad idea. Not only will the withdrawal be considered income to the donor and thus be subject to taxation, but the donor will also have to pay an additional 10% penalty. This penalty is charged because the donor is withdrawing assets from the account prior to age 59 and a half. The donor may receive a charitable deduction from the gift. This deduction could offset the income charged to the donor as a result of withdrawing the funds. However, this charitable deduction will not offset the 10% penalty charged for early withdrawal. The charitable deduction resulting from the donation will not offset the 10% penalty, but even in a perfect situation, making a $10,000 gift by withdrawing funds from the retirement account will cost the donor at least $11,000. Beyond this, it is often the case that the charitable deduction may not perfectly offset the effects of the increased income resulting from the withdrawal of funds. For example, if the donor was not otherwise an itemizer, the charitable deduction for a $10,000 gift will not reduce income by the full $10,000. Or if the donor is in the range of income where P's amendment rules result in a reduction of such deductions, the charitable deduction for a $10,000 gift will not reduce income by the full $10,000. Or if the donor reaches the income limits for deducting charitable gifts, the deduction will not be available until future years. Further, the increase in income, even if offset by deductions, may generate other negative tax consequences because certain tax benefits are not available for those whose adjusted gross income falls above specific levels. For example, the, the earned income tax credit is reduced for income above certain threshold. The adoption credit is reduced for those with modified adjusted gross income above the threshold level. The child tax credit is reduced by a half of a percent 
for any modified adjusted gross income above the threshold level. Education tax benefits also phase out after certain income thresholds, such as the American Opportunity Credit, the Lifetime Learning Credit, uh, and deductibility of qualifying student loan interest. Then finally, eligibility to make Roth IRA contributions begins to phase out after certain income thresholds, as does deductibility of IRA contributions. For taxpayers affected by these phase-out ranges, the negative tax consequences of the increased income resulting from the retirement account withdrawal will not perfectly offset the charitable income tax deduction. Additionally, if taxpayers are eligible for other income-based government benefits, the increase in income resulting from the retirement account withdrawal may have additional negative consequences. Withdrawals made after age 59 and a half do not generate the 10% penalty, as do those made before this age. Consequently, it is possible that the deduction generated by making a corresponding charitable gift could completely offset the effects of the increased income due to a withdrawal from a retirement account. As before, the ability to completely offset the effects of the increased income with the charitable tax deduction depends upon a variety of factors such as the donor's itemization status, the income giving limitations, and whether or not the increased income will have negative effects for the donor in other areas such as income-based phase-outs for various tax benefits. Withdrawals after age 72 receive the same tax treatment as those taken at any point after age 50. And a half. The primary difference is that minimum withdrawals are required beginning at age 72. Thus, the account holder cannot simply choose not to take a withdrawal. Instead, the account holder must take a minimum withdrawal in the amount of the account balance divided by the remaining years of life expectancy for a typical person of the account holder's age. If the account holder fails to withdraw at least this amount, he or she will be taxed in the amount of 50% of the required distribution. Because the taxpayer is forced to withdraw the required minimum distribution from the retirement account, the negative tax effects from increased income will occur regardless of whether or not a charitable gift is made. The taxpayer cannot simply choose not to take a withdrawal. If the taxpayer is forced to withdraw the funds but does not need them for consumption, a charitable gift may be an ideal use of these funds. The charitable deduction resulting from the gift may entirely or at least partially offset the negative tax effects resulting from the increased income due to the required distribution. The ideal charitable distribution is a Qualified Charitable Distribution or QCD. This arrangement is ideal because the donor is allowed to make a transfer directly from his or her retirement account to a charity. This transfer does not count as income to the donor, but does reduce the required minimum distribution from the account. The donor receives no deduction, but also has no increase in income. This perfect offset makes this transaction equivalent to the perfect withdraw and gift transaction with 100% usable tax deduction and no negative effects from the increased income. After having been temporarily approved for several years, the qualified charitable distribution is now part of the permanent tax code. The qualified charitable distribution includes the following limitations. The participant must be 70 and a half or older, in other words, subject to required minimum distributions. The maximum transfer is limited to $100,000. The qualified charitable distributions must be from an IRA or IRA rollover. These are not allowed for distributions from 401k, 403b, SEP, SIMPLE, pension or profit sharing plans. However, the retired account holder with a 401k, 403b, 457 plan, SEP IRA or simple IRA, assuming it's more than two years old, could consider rolling the account over into a traditional IRA rollover to allow for future qualified charitable distributions. This strategy will work only for qualified charitable distributions in future years because any current required minimum distribution from the non-traditional IRA account must be distributed and cannot be rolled over into a traditional IRA. 
Finally, the distribution must go to a public charity, not a private foundation or a donor advised fund. And the donor may receive no benefits in return for the transfer. Similarly, the distribution may not go to pay for a charitable gift annuity or be transferred to a charitable remainder trust or charitable lead trust. If the donor has taken deductions for making an IRA contribution at age 70 and a half or older, this may interfere with using a QCD. A QCD will be treated as a normal withdrawal followed by a charitable donation until the total amount of QCDs exceed the total amount of deductible IRA contributions made at age 70 and a half or older. Any IRA contributions made before age 70 and a half have no effect. However, QCDs are not affected by IRA contributions made by the donor's spouse. Thus, the donor's spouse could make deductible IRA contributions at any age, while at the same time, the donor made QCD donations. If the spouse has earned income but didn't otherwise plan to make an IRA contribution, this creates a planning opportunity. Instead of using the spouse's earned income to make a donation, it is usually better to have the spouse make a deductible IRA contribution and have the donor spouse make the donation as a QCD. If the earning spouse makes a donation, it creates only an itemized charitable deduction. If the couple is taking the standard deduction, this isn't valuable. However, if the spouse uses those funds to make a deductible contribution to, to an IRA, that is an above-the-line deduction. It can be used along with the standard deduction. Making the gift as a QCD then lowers one spouse's IRA account, offsetting the increase in the other spouse's IRA account. If the donor is age 72 or older, this QCD gift will also lower any required minimum distributions for the donating spouse. Distributions from Roth IRAs will be tax-free in a number of circumstances. First, if the distribution is from the account holder's regular participant contributions to the Roth IRA, there is no taxation or penalties for withdrawing funds. The account holder has already paid taxes on this amount and its contribution into or withdrawal from the Roth IRA does not generate any additional taxes or penalties. Any distributions from the Roth IRA are considered to be from the account holder's regular participant contributions until all of these have been distributed. Distributions in excess of the account holder's regular participant contributions will next consist of distributions of any IRA conversions. A conversion occurs when the account holder converts a retirement account, such as a traditional IRA, into a Roth account. This conversion requires the account holder to pay income taxes on the amount of the converted account. Thus, distributions of such conversions do not generate income taxes because the income taxes on this money have already been paid. However, if the account holder is younger than 59 and a half and the conversion was less than five years ago, the 10% penalty on early withdrawal must still be paid for these conversion assets. If this rule did not exist, the 10% penalty on early withdrawals from a traditional IRA could be completely avoided by simply converting to a Roth IRA and taking the distributions. Finally, all remaining distributions will be considered earnings. Distributions of earnings after age 59 and a half does not generate income taxes or penalties, assuming the distribution occurs at least five years after the account holder funded his first Roth IRA account. However, distributions of earnings before age 59 and a half typically generate both income taxes and penalties. The 10% penalty could be avoided from either traditional or Roth IRA accounts if the funds are used for specific allowed purposes, but these do not include making charitable gifts. When distributions from Roth IRAs are tax-free, they may make a desirable source for charitable gifts. However, this will result in reducing the amount of funds in the Roth IRA and may not correspond with retirement tax planning strategies of the donor. 
For example, additional growth in the Roth IRA can be withdrawn without taxation after age 59 and a half, and reducing IRA assets through gifting eliminates this future tax-free growth on gifted assets. This has been Donating Retirement Assets, Part 1, Giving During Life. Join us next time for Donating Retirement Assets, Part 2, Giving at Death.